Good morning, everybody. I hope uh, you're doing really well. Pray for me. I'm still getting over sickness. Uh, I had a stomach bug yesterday. You might notice my uh, voice is a little scratchy. Oh, it wasn't fun. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, just just keep this in prayer. This is the second one, uh, second time I've had this. My littlest one has had it twice, and uh, there are eight of us in the house right now, so please pray that it stops with me. Um, I don't want to go through this again. <laughs> it will. It's a pretty rough time. Um, today, I I, uh, I I might be brief, I might not, I don't know, depending on if my voice holds out. Um, but I, I think it's important for us to remember who we are. And uh, I was doing a study with our men's group, and Tuesday night, <clears throat> the the study we were doing, the the person who wrote the study reminded me, and, and this is something actually maybe I, I wasn't even reminded of to begin with, it's just something I needed to know, is that Jesus spent the first two years of his ministry telling people who they were. He was telling them who they are in the eyes of God, who they are um, in in uh uh, himself, who they are uh, um, as God sees them. Not as the, the religious works made them, but who God is and who or what he felt about them. And the Apostle Paul did the same. And, and we went over this, and I, I, I want to share it with you. If you have your Bible, I'm not going to read the entirety of it, but read Ephesians 1 to 3 and listen to these promises. Here, here we go. We're just going to start. Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Did you hear that promise? He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he chose us, he chose us. In him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He's made us holy and blameless in love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. We are sons and daughters through Christ. According to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has blessed us in the beloved. Look at that. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first in hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. Wow, that's just 13 verses of the first chapter, and there's three chapters full of promises. It was hard for me to write all those down. As a matter of fact, at one point in my study, I stopped because there was just so many promises. I ran out of room on my paper. When it comes down to it, we need to be reminded of who we are. We need to be reminded that we are sons and daughters of God, that it is by His grace and His grace alone that we receive any of this, that He is giving us all these things because He is lavishing us with His love, sealing us uh, for redemption through His Holy Spirit. We are possessors of the promise. This shouldn't make us arrogant. Instead, just as Paul said, it should make us praise God all the more. We need to stop looking at ourselves. We need to stop looking within. We need to stop looking at our works and focus on the glory of God by whom we possess all these wonderful gifts that he has given us. It's why I've seen Christians who are in the most impoverished state, who have been uh, uh, beaten and ridiculed and, and fired and, and all sorts of things for their faith. Um, they've, they've done that, but they've been in the most joyous state I've ever seen. Because they realize who God is and they 
are beginning to understand who they are in him. We're not going to get that fullness. In 1 Corinthians 13, it says, Then we will know as we are fully known, but now we know in part. So when it comes down to it, we need to understand and realize who we are in Christ. We need to realize that it's not about us, that our works don't matter. As a matter of fact, the good works we do are a byproduct of our faith instead of a have to. We love God and so the good works will come as we love him more. What it comes down to is we are saved by grace through faith. We are sealed by his redemption. He has done all this, not us. God has done this. Through Christ Jesus on that cross, God has done all this. He planned it before the foundation of the world and he knew who you would be. And so if that is who you are, then start reminding yourself of that. If that is who you are, then start thanking God and praising him in everything you do and say. If that is who you are, then step back and let God be God. Give him the outcome. Give him the results. And allow him to tell you who you are. Allow him to speak through his word to remind you what he thinks of you. And allow him, through his Holy Spirit, to change you into the image he's been destining, or he's destined you for. I hope this is helpful. Please get involved, like, share, comment. I want to hear what your thoughts on this are. God bless.